Well, it's the morning of <clears throat> Tuesday, 31st of July. So, I've been at sea for 29 days. So, here's another little navigational update. Uh, this is the, the islands again of um, Victoria and Kvitoria, which we came past and we were coming nicely to the southwest, uh, but the wind has uh, backed and we're in a position where we were sailing due south very nicely. So the question was, do I carry on doing that? Um, now, if this wind continued as it is, and we went on south and south and south and south and south, what we're doing then is really, really losing contact with the, the islands of East Svalbard. Uh, in fact, by the time we, if we kept going all the way, we'd end up in Archangel, and we'd, we'd end up, um, I don't know, uh, something like, 300 or so, sorry about this, it's trying to do this on a, trying to show the whole chart here. Yeah, if we came, came down due south, we'd end up in Russia, uh, and we would also end up probably uh, at least 300 miles uh, to the east of, where have we gone? There you are, to the east of Björnoy, a bare island. Um, so um, I don't want to end up way, way in the middle of the Barents Sea, in the middle of nowhere. I want to keep contact with um, with these islands uh, on uh, of Eastern Svalbard. And also keep some westing. We've got to go west eventually. I can't just go south forever and ever. So what I've done, come back to where we started. We got down to round about here. Um, so I've taken the decision to tack. So we're now heading um, a little bit uh, north of west, almost back up uh, towards Kritoya. And if we kept going, we'd be there in about a, a day or so, and that's fine. Um, uh, but the point is it brings us back um, into the ambit of these islands. And then if the wind held, if I come south again, then here's Concarles land and so on and so forth. Um, so I took the decision it's best to tack early, even though it feels a bit strange to be heading slightly north again. I'd rather do that now uh, than later. And this is always the navigational problem. To what extent do you sail for the wind you've got? or to what extent you rely on a change in the wind which is going to bring you back where you want to be. Um, well, I think generally you have to sail for the wind you've got. Um, you can't assume it's going to change and southwesterlies can blow for a week easily. Um, and if I don't get in west fairly soon, by the time I want to make my westing, there's absolutely nothing interesting uh, at all down in the middle of the Barents Sea here. Uh, so that's where we're at. Sorry, that was not a very um, good uh, a clip from a filmic point of view. Um, but there we are. Just just want to update you with my thinking and where we are and where we're doing. So we're heading we're heading back uh, west and slightly north to get back basically into the into the Svalbard Islands. Well here we are lazy Tuesday afternoon inside Miming Two's cabin. Getting a bit quieter as I think the wind is easing away slowly. This wind which has been heading us for a while. We're now only about 12, 13 miles south of Victoria Island, the lone western outpost of the Franz Josef Land. And we're about 30 miles 
from Kfitoya, White Island, which is the easternmost of the Svalbard group. And I suppose if it was a beautiful clear day out there, we would probably be able to see both of them. But if we come to the hatch, all we have out there is fog, which is sometimes thick, sometimes a bit, a bit thinner, fairly thick at the moment. Fog, no hint of sunshine, and of course, pretty much zero visibility. But we live in hope. The weather does change, the fog does clear, and then we get brilliant clear patches. We had one yesterday. Hopefully, we'll get one sometime today or tonight because any time in the 24 hours does, because we have sunshine, potentially, and daylight for 24 hours. And if we look out forward, we can't see very much because it's foggy. So we're just moseying along at uh, about two, two and a half knots at the moment. I could set more sail, but I'm not, not in particular hurry at the moment. Just want this uh, this weather to clear. We're getting ourselves slowly into a nice position, hopefully midway between the two islands. Uh, and hopefully we'll be able to have a look at them. Well, it's getting very tense here aboard Ming Ming 2 because the fog is clearing bank of fog is moving away to the north up there and you can see over there some patches of blue sky appearing a little bit. And you can see there the cloud just above the horizon should just be somewhere up here on our starboard beam, a little bit forward of the beam. And if this fog clears away and the blue sky stays, then we really, really ought to see it. So everybody aboard is keeping a very, very sharp lookout here in the hope that shortly we might have some good news. Well, this is amazing. The island of Victoria um, has evaded us in the murk, but not Kfitoya, White Island. I've been watching this patch in the sky for a while and I've suddenly realized what it is as we got closer. It's ice glare. And if I zoom in, might just be able to see the curve of the of the glacier underneath that patch. We're a bit far away and we're going to go a bit closer. Um, but underneath that patch I can see the I can see the glacier I can see the the curve of the top of it Quite a shallow curve, um, lighter than the rest of it. Um, I think I have seen ice glare before on the, on the stone glacier on Edgeway when we were here four years ago, but 
I've not seen it so strikingly here because the rest of the sky is so dark it's been such a miserable dark evening come back again you can just see it's it's just incredible and it's uh, this bright illuminated path whereas everywhere else is grey murky not a sign of the sun but over here this uh, reflected light off the off the top of the glacier I can assure you I'm absolutely delighted because I've put in a a long long board here a long long tack uh, uh, four o'clock this morning I went about and it, to tack northwest just to see if we could see this island um, and it's a about uh, half past 10, 11 o'clock at night, so we've been at it for nearly 20 hours without any guarantee that we were going to get anything from it. But I'm just so elated to finally um, have got Pretor in my sights. Four years ago, it evaded us because of the ice, we couldn't get here. Was looking very miserable up until a few minutes ago when I realized what was going on here uh, so we'll continue on in uh, I'll probably go, I was intending anyway to start taking south in about an hour and a half's time uh, just after midnight after midnight it will turn uh, it will become the 1st of August which seems like a um, a good time to start definitively for home but now I've actually got something to show um, for all my trouble uh, then I might continue in uh, a little bit closer we're starting to get to the halfway point between Fitoy and Victoria Island so we've got Svalbard to the west and to the east we've got Franz Josef Land but if we look over there it's absolutely it's so murky there's so much moisture in the air so much um, haze around the horizon it's so dark because the layer of cloud here is so thick no sunshine there on the port bow is the ice glare of Pretoria, the white island. This island is just total glacier apart from one tiny little rocky headland on the other side on the northwest side. Um, reminds me I need to be a little bit careful because there might be some stray bits of ice dropping off it because it's got ice cliffs all around. Anyway, there we are. I'll just zoom in one more time. As I say, I have no idea whether on the on the video you can. Yeah, I can see it on the screen. That curve, very shallow curve um, of the top of the glacier. You can just make it out there. Anyway, I'll go in a bit closer. Hopefully, we'll get some some better views. But uh, yeah, I'm so relieved because I've made such an effort to uh, to get here, and I just wanted to see this island. I'd love to see Victoria Island. Doesn't look like a will, doesn't look like I get to see Franz Josef Land at all. But at least, um, at least I've seen Victoria. And I suppose you could say it's a bit irrational. Why do you want to see the island? You know where you are, you know it's there. I don't know what it is, um, and, and I'm not really a sort of touristy type. Um, but it still gives me a hell of a thrill um, 
to see this, to have it revealed, to have come all this way and see this this amazing sight of this island which is which is just one big glacier and to see the see the glare that it's um, it's producing. And I read so much about ice glare in Tilman and so on. And this is certainly, as I said before, the the most dramatic um, example uh, that I've certainly seen of it.